Why is it that many Indians dislike Twitter so much that on Twitter itself in India, hashtags demanding a ban on Twitter started to trend? And why is it that Twitter have been in so many controversies across the world? And why is it that so many people across the world dislike Twitter's conduct and disliked how Twitter operates? And finally, how do international organizations and global tech companies deal with something as sensitive as territorial mapping? Point number one, to start with, let's take a real look at Twitter and try to understand what it really is. Yes, for me and for many of you, Twitter is a global social media giant or an American microblogging and social networking service, but can we deny that for others, Twitter can also have a very different meaning? Yes, there are those who feel that Twitter is one of the biggest porn sites in the world or one of the world's biggest gateways to porn, giving kids unrestricted access. Yes, you heard that right, giving kids unrestricted access. Minors or children getting access to adult content via a mainstream global social media giant. How terrible does that sound? In 2020, it was even mentioned that Twitter has been by far the most important social media platform for the porn world, if only because it has been the least hostile to it. Can you believe that? Now please listen to what South Africa-based JGL Forensic Services had to say on this matter. Other social media sites, Facebook in particular, are far more responsible when it comes to adult content, choosing to self-regulate what they allow in spite of not being legally obliged to do so. They've invested heavily in technology that identifies posted content that doesn't comply with their policies so that can be quickly removed. Why doesn't Twitter do the same? After all, if something is illegal in the real world, it should be illegal online. Exposing children to pornography content is a crime in South Africa. Why is it not a crime on Twitter? Are you surprised? No, you shouldn't be. Popular adult film stars use Twitter to make a profit and promote their content. In December 2020, the US-based organization FTND stated, Twitter is still the social media platform most accepting of porn. FTND even stated, the bottom line is it's in Twitter's best interest to have as many users on its platform as possible, even if those users violate guidelines or share illicit content. How horrific does that sound? But it's not only about kids' accessibility to adult content via Twitter that has caused concern globally. It is also about the adult film industry itself, which has contributed to severe human rights violations, child exploitation, sex trafficking, etc. How can we ignore that? To broaden your perspective regarding the lesser known size of the adult film industry and to understand why adult film content is not equivalent to sex education, I highly recommend that you watch this. Point number two, child pornography, pedophile networks and Twitter. Back in 2019, reportedly, the UK-based Internet Watch Foundation revealed nearly half of the child abuse content in the social media space is being shared openly on microblogging platform Twitter. Dr. Michael Salter is the Scientia Associate Professor of Criminology at the University of New South Wales, which is one of Australia's leading research and teaching universities. On January 3, 2020, Dr. Salter tweeted, in the last year, pedophile networks on Twitter have exploded, including users who endorse contact offending and justify child sexual abuse material. Not only that, Dr. Salter, who has expertise in technologically facilitated abuse, went on to say, Sexual desires and social inclusion of pedophiles have been prioritized by Twitter over the safety of children. How atrocious does that sound? Now please, Pause the video for a moment and read this to understand why unmonitored public conversations between large groups of pedophiles are considered unsafe. Point number three, territorial mapping and societal and political polarization. Several Indian and global media outlets have recently reported that Twitter published an image of a distorted map of India. As expected, this led to anger and dissatisfaction among many Indian netizens and many even questioned Twitter's so-called neutrality on such issues. Yes, there is no doubt that territorial mapping is a very sensitive matter and it is almost impossible to please all parties involved. Interestingly, it also seems that there are alternative ways that others follow. 
For example, Greg Bensinger has highlighted that in Google Maps, when it comes to contested borders, people in different countries often see different things. Mr. Bensinger also mentions, from Argentina to the United Kingdom to Iran, the world's borders look different depending on where you're viewing them from. That's because Google and other online map makers simply change them. As displayed here, do you notice how India's map looks different to web surfers in India in comparison to how it looks to those in Pakistan? As far as territorial mapping is concerned, it is important that social media giants take India's perspective into consideration, and in relation to that, Survey of India, which is the national survey and mapping organization of the country under the Department of Science and Technology, can possibly assist these tech companies. Twitter is not alone in presenting an incorrect or distorted map of India. Both Indian and foreign, many studies or presentations, stock images and stock footage may have done so, either intentionally or unintentionally. But it appears that Twitter's conduct often raises eyebrows due to the political polarization that takes place on Twitter. According to an article on a website that is hosted by Harvard Web Publishing, the capacity of social media to personalize information appears to be contributing to greater levels of extremism, and online political polarization is increasing. Sunman Hong observes these developments in this study which focuses on political polarization on Twitter. Yes, constructive criticism, debate and dissent contribute to a healthy society, but platforms that encourage or allow toxic abuse or hateful rants that lead to animosity, extremism or divisiveness are probably going to make things worse. It is worth mentioning that regarding adult content and child sexual abuse material, it is not only the platform of Twitter which is misused. There are many other social media platforms which need to be questioned or carefully observed. But to understand how Twitter fares in comparison with others and why Twitter has been involved in so many controversies, it is important that we also pay attention to these experts. See you again.